Hi everyone, this is Mr. Mike for the Mechanicsburg Learning Center with another episode of Dino a Day. Today's animal, a sauropod, and as we've learned in previous episodes, sauropod is just a fancy way of saying long neck. This particular animal had an extremely, extremely long neck. One of the longest necks ever discovered, and when it was discovered, it was the longest neck. Other animals have been discovered since that they think may have had a longer neck, but there's still uh, a lot of uh, scientific discoveries that need to be made to make sure that we're on the right track. This animal is called Mementosaurus, meaning Mementi lizard. It was discovered in a province of China while they uh, were doing construction on a new highway. And as we know, some dinosaurs have two names, like Tyrannosaurus rex, Dracorex hogwartsia. This one is no different. Like every dinosaur, it has a second name. Its name is Mementosaurus constructus, named so because it was found during the construction of a highway in China. Now, its discoveries go back to 1952. And <laughs> interestingly enough, two years later, it was named by a gentleman, Chun Chen Young, 1954. They kept making discoveries of this animal every few years, and its neck length began to change. Now, here is your classic Brachiosaurus, okay, Brachiosaurus, with a long neck held rather upwards, more vertical than horizontal, okay? And what you'll note is that, you know, all these sauropods are very similarly shaped, but just not similarly uh, laid out in terms of how they stood small head, big belly. This one had not a particularly long tail. This one does have a long tail. And the reason I'm showing you these different dinosaurs is there are not many Mementosaurus models even available. Uh, you don't come across them very often. So here is our old friend Diplodocus, extremely long tail, pretty long neck, very small head, big wide feet to support such a gigantic body and of course a belly that would uh, help help uh, really uh, pull the nutrients out of the the food that it uh, that it ate now these animals almost all of them we discovered these things called gastroliths gastroliths the word gastro means belly lith means rock so they're belly rocks and the reason you may have figured this out as the reason that they swallowed these uh, rocks and left them in their belly was so when it gulped down plant matter, it would be transported down the neck into the belly where the rocks would sort of move around and help the animal digest and, as I said, pull the nutrients out of the food. So the Mementosaurus is more closely related in terms of its stance to this guy, Diplodocus. We've seen drawings of Mementosaurus where it looked more like Brachiosaurus, but we think its neck was so long that it would have taken an immense amount of energy for the animal to pump the blood from its heart the whole way up its neck. Uh, estimates of its neck, get this, start out at 31 feet just for the neck. Now if you know anything about dinosaurs, uh, that's a pretty good size for a fully grown dinosaur. Stegosaurus, Triceratops, those reach around 30 feet. So here we have an animal with a neck that's every bit as long as the entire Stegosaurus or Triceratops. This is where the estimates begin, somewhere in the neighborhood of 31, 32 feet. Then they go to 35. We've seen estimates of 36 feet. We've seen estimates of the neck of this Mementosaurus that go the whole way up from 46 to 49 feet long. That is one huge neck. That's a lot of vertebra. Strangely enough, it didn't have any more vertebra than uh, neck bones, I should say. It didn't have any more neck bones than other animals. It had the same. Uh, if you compare it to a giraffe, it had about the same number of neck bones. They were just a lot bigger. So these things would, uh, would dwarf any other animal just on neck size alone. And because its neck was so big, they weren't sure how it even supported it. Uh, they thought at one time it held its neck up like Brachiosaurus, now we think it probably did this, and it may not have had a lot of mobility. It may not have been extremely flexible. It may have just spent its time 
going back and forth all day, eating, 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 to fill up that belly, when you got an animal that's, in, in some cases, we think that the Mementosaurus could grow up to 115 feet long, one of the biggest dinosaurs ever. Uh, the only dinosaur that we know is bigger, at least uh, what science is telling us is bigger right now, is Supersaurus. So, talk for a second about its teeth. All right. Now, if you're a fan of SpongeBob, you may recognize what this is. It's a spatula! Yes, it is a spatula. And we describe the Mementosaurus teeth as sort of spatula-like. Uh, sometimes Diplodocus, for example, had more pencil-like teeth, several teeth that would help to prune a plant. This thing would shear off plants like a spatula. So that's why uh, some of the studies I've done on this thing have shown it to have spatula-like teeth. Did you ever think we'd mention spatula in talking about dinosaurs? At any rate, um, it was discovered in China. All the species of Mementosaurus, and there have been several, Mementosaurus constructus, Mementosaurus blah blah, Mementosaurus blah blah, and on and on and on. All of them have been discovered in China, so we have not found it outside China. At least what was China back in, uh, we have to go back 160 to 145 million years ago from when this animal lived. But we believe that the discovery of the Mementosaurus in China helped to spur this uh, whole idea that there were things such as dragons. And even in recent history, there have been uh, recipes and prescriptions for folks to take to make themselves feel better that contained dragon bones. And in many cases, the dragon bones were ground up dinosaur bones, and those bones sometimes were attributed to Mementosaurus. So the discovery of Mementosaurus may have uh, spurred along the whole fo folklore idea of Chinese dragons. No evidence that they breathe fire, however. Uh, so let's see. So we got its last name. We know it's a sauropod. We know it had gastroliths in its belly. We believe that it lived to maybe 100 years old. It probably had good eyesight based on some of the uh, physiological things. They look at the uh, orbit around the eye to know how much light's being let in. And interesting thing, too, about Mementosaurus, it may have had a small club on its tail. Not as big or as weapony as uh, Ankylosaurus, you know, but there's several species have shown a small club. Maybe not, uh, it maybe wouldn't have been a weapon because it's such a long, like Diplodocus, a very, very long, long, thin tail. But at the end of it, they found some, uh, some evidence that there were some spines uh, that stuck out a little bit further that would have been covered in uh, another material and it may have had a small club. So, from Dinorific Poetry, Volume 2, I'm going to read you a poem that does mention Mementosaurus. I love to mention Mementosaurus. It mentions, actually, many different dinosaurs. I was trying to write a story that covered a bunch of different ones, and I could mention a few in one poem. So here was my attempt at that, and it's called Dinos Playing Poker, illustrated by my son, Ethan. You guys know what poker is? It's a card game. Dinos Playing Poker by Mr. Mike, illustrated by my son, Ethan. I had some trouble sleeping. I think my mattress was too lumpy. The sounds outside and down the hall were making me feel jumpy. My folks went out for dinner, and they'd called in several favors. But all their friends were busy, so they had to call the neighbors. We live beside some dinosaurs. They've always been quite quiet. I hope that they were fond of plants, so we weren't on their diet. I'm sure my mom and dad made sure to check out our new sitters, but still I couldn't fall asleep so close to such large critters. That night they talked quite loudly, and I quickly got the feeling they might break chairs and smash their heads right through our ten-foot ceiling. There's rumbling and grumbling. They must be playing poker. My sister was asleep. Sometimes she'd yell out when I woke her. I had no choice. I had to go disturb my older sister. She's likely to blurt out that you're in big, big trouble, mister. But now she's up. I'm still alive. And so we prowl the hall. We slowly, oh, so slowly, feel our way along the wall. And in the dining room, we see a sight we can't believe. I looked at Sis and rubbed both eyes on my blue bathrobe sleeve. 
The dinosaurs were playing cards, engrossed, and betting money. I know it sounds preposterous. Trust me, this wasn't funny. Dilophosaurus had a stack of coins that all but towered above Edmontosaurus, who looked cool and freshly showered. The smallest stack of coins belonged to clever Gallimimus. I glanced at Sis while praying that the dinosaurs, the, the dinosaurs won't spy us. A bubble pipe was perched between the Gassosaurus lips. From a glass of chocolate milk, Yuhi Lopez took some sips. Hypacrosaurus looked asleep. He drooled upon the table. Mementosaurus strained. His lengthy neck was too unstable. The image that was burned to my mind that very night is one you'll see right in this book, if I can get it right. I'm sure my mom and dad will one day soon go out again, and when they do, I hope they won't call some other friend. The dinosaurs turned out to be the very best of neighbors, the kind of folks you're counting on when you're in need of favors. My sister did forgive me for the night that I awoke her. She would have missed her chance to see the dinos playing poker. Dinos Playing Poker by Mr. Mike, illustrated by my son Ethan when he was 11 years old. Thanks for uh, watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing this. Thanks for watching it on YouTube on Mr. Mike Scrignoli on the YouTube channel. So until tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Mr. Mike and the Mementosaurus lookalike, Diplodocus, saying have a great day and we'll tune in again tomorrow for another Dino a Day.